Listen to that, right? get on to the darts we're going to talk about your life growing up of course grew up in London you spent a lot of time in this place up here didn't you they're your parents up there just talk to us about the significance well yeah I was, uh, I was a news agent for 20 odd years that was 1999 I was still managing the shop and yet I was in a world final you know so I'd I'd do the morning papers my dad would give us a couple of hours off I'd have a, a, a sleep and then off to Perfectly, it was at the time. And you mentioned that world final. I think you've mentioned previously how nervous you were going into that final. Just talk us through your memories from that. Well, the first time was probably the best result I had against Mr. Taylor. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I did get fed up with the guy. He beat me three times. He didn't just beat me, he absolutely hammered me. Phil Taylor was on a different level. To be champion of the world for the seventh time. Yes! Yeah! I actually felt I had chances and believe it or not it was the, the late Eric Bristow who was the first person that spoke to me from that final said did you know that in them first two sets you were 2-0 up and you know I always remember that because I was and you still lost them 3 too. How different was your mindset when you went into a game against Phil? I love the fact that first time that I beat him on TV in the world match play uh, was the fact that nearly every player, every person uh, had already sorted out who had won it. And uh, I was quite relaxed and I think that's the way to play him, putting him under a little bit of pressure. I was well in front and then he, he called up. I remember it going, um, I must have been four or five legs up and then going 14 all. Got the 16 14 and I remember turning round to shake his hand and uh, I only realised that it was a break. It, well, I thought I'd, I'd won it, but it wasn't his, his first to 70. But that's when I came back out and, and took the 128 out, so it was easy. Ball to win! Yeah. Oh, ball it is! Standing. The famous shirt that I won the uh, first ever and only ever TV tournament, the uh, Las Vegas Desert Classic. And to go on and to win and to beat well, I, who I beat, the world champion, John Park, to actually win the TV tournament made it special. This double tennis served him well all week. Oh. Yes! The They're the only two trophies that I actually have, have kept, uh, the Las Vegas and, and the World Championship one. Other than that, people that come in my house wouldn't know I was a, a dart player. We're going to have to mention the 2002 as well. When you met Phil Taylor in that one, of course, that's the one a lot of people remember for things that happened off the dartboard as well. How do you remember? Um, well, he just dominated right from the start, right from, you know, everyone said to me, oh, get into him early, get in, you know, and there he is taking out uh, 153s and in the first leg. And you knew that uh, you were going to be in for it. And um, normally when Phil wins a tournament, he got into the habit of running to the left, running to the right, running all over the place, except turning around and shaking the guy's hand. And I thought, well, I'm not even going to shake your hand here. I said, you're going to be running around. Because as soon as his final dart went in a double, I went off. And what did he do? Turn around, shake my hand. <laughs> totally opposite to what I thought he was going to do. That's where all the booing started then. And then I realised I got to play darts with uh, 10,000 people booing me. And how big a moment did that turn out to be in your career? It's fantastic. It, it, it made me this feeling that I didn't expect. But the thing is, I, I, I knew myself that I could not, I didn't have the game to reach the standard that Phil Taylor was. Um, but I thought, I'm, I'm earning quite well here. I could do quite well. And um, things like that, I realised, bad news is probably bigger than good news. People remember the bad stuff more than they do the, the good. So I, I, I quite like becoming a pantomime villain and thoroughly enjoyed it. It was 2006 where we really saw you back playing some of your best darts. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, I was, I was flying. Oh, yes. Manly! Magnificent! The game with Lewis 
um, I was playing really well. Words on stage again. To me, I turned around to Adrian and asked him to stop tatting. And he, he messed about, just waiting to get the game started. And I said, you're having a laugh. And it was really, you're having a laugh, like, get on with the game. And he walked off. I had no idea. I didn't say walk off. You know, he walked off. Uh, that's how it all sort of started. But he obviously went on to lose the game. Now then, needs tops for a place in the semi final. Yes, yes. Peter Van Listen! I'm going to move on to this one because. Just look at Phil Taylor's face. You must come in here. If you're feeling a little bit glum, you can come in here, take a look at Phil Taylor's face, and I'm sure it makes everything better. I mean, I've, I've tried to, to do the same as what Eric Cantona used to do when he scored the goal. Um, he would uh, just look how easy he was at, and that's the sort of thing I was trying to do there. But Phil Taylor's face was a complete picture, and that was the second time after the World Match Play that I'd beaten him on TV. And that was um, really, that was a, uh, not many people have beaten him twice on TV. And what role does darts have in your life now? Well, the seniors have started up, so at the moment I'm getting invited uh, into that. And, um, you know, as soon as I don't get invited, I think that, because uh, I won't be going and qualifying. Um, I just haven't got that in me to do. So, and with the health problems that I had, it's not something that I've, that's still in the back of my mind that frightens me to actually take that take that step back into it. And like I say, I'm 60, I'm, I think I've deserved a, a little bit of an easier life.